thank you for joining us for this recorded online briefing from July 2014. In this session, Dr. Patrick Viscuzo from the Information Security Oversight Office of the National Archives and Records Administration shares updates from the Controlled Unclassified Information Program. Dr. Patrick Viscuso holds his bachelor's, his bachelor's of Science in Foreign Service from Georgetown University and a master's from Holy Cross and a PhD in, historical area, in a historical area from study at the Catholic University of America. He has worked for the United States government for 24 years with the Department of Defense and the National Archives and Records Administration. He has occupied his present position as the Associate Director for the Controlled Unclassified Information in the Information Oversight Office since 2008. With that, I would like to pass it on to uh, Dr. Viscuso. Well, thank you very much, Paulette. Um, I, first of all, I, I'm, I, I just want to let everyone know what an honor it is to be able to share something about our work here at the National Archives, and in particular about controlled un unclassified information. It is truly an honor to be able to speak to a worldwide audience and to uh, bring this information to you because I think it's a very worthwhile program. It's one I strongly believe in. I've been associated with since 2008, and um, there are some exciting things that are happening within this program. So um, without any further ado, let's go to the uh, briefing outline, which is on the next slide. So. In today's discussion, we'll be basically giving you an overview of the program. And uh, what I'd like to do is speak a little bit more to the uh, information technology implementation aspects of the program. Um, although there is lots of paper in the government, uh, lots more information is in digital form. That is the present and the future. And uh, any program that deals with information management or protection must, must address information technology. And so in that context, uh, we will also talk to the CUI approach for the contractor environment. Um, uh, government uh, is big, and uh, a large part of the work of the government is done by private industry. And uh, the program is going to have to address private industry and how it will implement the CUI program. So let's uh, turn to the next slide. This slide sort of summarizes uh, the present experience uh, in the present uh, way of which uh, unclassified information is approached within the government. You have uh, a number of systems of controlling it all reflected in various markings. If anyone who is listening in is a government employee or even outside the government has ever encountered this type of information as marking, uh, these types of markings that you see in this slide should be very familiar. FOUO, standing for for official use only. Um, sensitive but unclassified. Um, there are, uh, according to a GAO study, there are over 107 different systems of controlling unclassified information, the executive branch, reflected in over 100 different markings. Uh, the problem with the present system, and one that has been recognized by a number of administrations, is that um, the what occurs uh, with this type of information is uh, that the, the uh, regulations that govern it often are based in agency regulations. Agency regulations that are not known outside the agency uh, often, and uh, even within the agency, not well known. Consequently, there is confusion uh, especially when this information is shared outside of an agency, about how to safeguard it, how to protect it, uh, often leading to problems. Can we turn to the next slide? So, this, so what happens is that you have a lot of inconsistencies, consequently. Uh, you may have the same information uh, possessed by several different agencies, but marked in different ways. You may have the same markings applied to information, 
uh, by several different agencies, but different uh, systems of protection are meant by them. And the result is when it is shared, there is often confusion. Sometimes the information is not protected enough. Sometimes the information is restricted, uh, restricted unnecessarily. And this leads to problems in information sharing. Uh, after 9-11, uh, the Bush administration attempted to address some of these problems by a policy that, it, that was directed towards the terrorism, homeland security arena, and uh, addressed reform of information sharing practices within this environment. Um, in 2009, the Obama administration uh, established a presidential task force to examine the problems of the uh, protection of unclassified information, various markings, and uh, recommendations were made that there should be one unified system. Could we have the next slide, please? One unified system a transparent system that would establish a common understanding of how this information should be protected with a uniform marking system. Um, consequently, next slide please, a executive order was issued in 2010. It was Executive Order 13556, Controlled Unclassified Information. It established a program a program, one unified program within the executive branch to uh, address the protection of this information. It established an executive agent to implement this executive order, and this was the National Archives. The archivist uh, designated the Information Security Oversight Office, the office which I work at, to undertake the responsibilities of executive agent. And established a standard, a standard by which this information would be falling under the scope of the program. Um, it's sort of captured in this uh, third bullet that you see on this slide. An open and uniform program to manage all unclassified information within the executive branch that requires safeguarding and dissemination controls as required by law, regulation, and government-wide policy. So the executive order established in this way the scope of information that would fall under this program, information that the law, and we're talking about statute, regulation, and when we say regulation, we mean federal regulation, government-wide regulation as opposed to agency-specific information, and government-wide policy requires control of. and. More specifically, it's safeguarding, in other words, it's protection, and dissemination controls, the controls that are addressing who has access to this type of information, where the law, federal regulation, government-wide policy specified that there should be controls, that information would be legitimately controlled by the federal government, outside, of course, of that which is classified or falls under the Atomic Energy Act. That's classified information, that's national security information. That doesn't fall under this program. This program is not about classification. It's about the sensitive, the unclassified information that laws, federal regulations, government-wide policies already require the government to protect, to restrict in terms of who has access to it. That established the scope of the programs and what information would fall under it. And it required the executive agent to establish uniform standards by which this information would be protected. Could I have the next slide, please? The executive order required that within 180 days of its issuance, uh, agencies submit appropriate types of information that required protection by law, regulation, government-wide policy to the executive agent for consideration for incorporation into an online registry, a registry that would list the types of information and also the basis upon which the government protected that information. 
we received over 2,200 individual submissions of authorities that would, for controlling information. Uh, we rippled and shuffled them, and the result of our uh, evaluation and our work with the interagency was to establish 22 categories and 85 subcategories of information falling under this program. These amounted to uh, 314 unique control citations. And in, in addition to the, to the control citations, we also noted 105 sanctioned citations that are associated with the information that we listed in this online registry. So what does this online registry look like? Can we have the next slide, please? If you, it is online right now, you can go online to www.archive.gov forward slash CUI, and you can see there, if you click on the appropriate link for the registry, uh, something like the following. This is an example of the page the result of that is related to the law enforcement investigation subcategory. You'll see a when you go to such a page, you'll see a definition of the category, and then you'll see a definition of the subcategory, and then you'll see hot links, hot links to each of the enactments that are the basis for establishing that category or subcategory of information that falls under the scope of the program. Each one of those links will bring you to the exact text which has what we call the control language the language that relates to any uh, restrictions on its dissemination or calls for its protection. Can I have the next slide, please? In the executive order calls for the executive agent, ISU, the National Archives, to consult with the rest of the executive branch with affected agencies in, um, in prescribing the uniform policies that will govern how this information will be handled. We have followed the example of the Chief Financial Officers Council in uh, approaching our consultative responsibilities. Uh, we basically followed the membership of that council. We, uh, we have an, in, in, in creating an advisory council by which we would work with the membership to, uh, to develop the, the uh, guidance that would govern the protection of the information I've just spoken of. If you look uh, on this uh, membership list, you'll also see in addition to those that would be listed under the Chief Financial Officers Council membership, you would also see the additions of the CIA and the FBI uh, added because of their, uh, because of the, uh, because of their uh, participation in the CUI program, the amount of information that they, they hold individually that falls under the scope of what we're attempting to protect. Um, in what are our current efforts like right now? What is the status of things right now? Can I have the next slide, please? Well, we are maintaining the registry uh, that I've just spoken to, the 22 categories and 85 subcategories. As we speak to the executive branch, we find uh, additional categories of information that, are, that fall under laws and regulations, government-wide policies, that will need to be added to the registry. Congress continues to enact uh, laws, and therefore we need to add additional enactments, authorities to the registry to keep it current. We also, in the course of our dialogue with the executive branch, have found what we would consider to be worthy categories or subcategories of information that don't have an underlying law, regulation, government-wide policy that would uh, en enable us to add them immediately to the registry, yet they are worthy, they, 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 there is, 
this information is worthy of protection. We have worked out with the Office of Management and Budget a process by which agencies can work towards the, uh, the establishment of the appropriate authority or enactment so that this, these types of information can be added to the registry at a later time, and we might provisionally approve the, this, these types of information so that agencies can use this uh, provisional approval in their planning for the implementation of the program. Currently, we are also finalizing policy, the, the, the uniform guidance that will govern how this information is handled. Um, currently, we have a proposed rule that is undergoing a formal Office of, of Management and Budget comment process with the goal of its publication of the Code of Federal Regulations so that it will be guidance for the entire executive branch. We are also preparing a national implementation plan. We're working with the agencies I spoke of and the Advisory Council and others to create and execute a, an implementation planning framework, including deadlines. Deadlines for what? Phased implementation. The executive order calls for phased implementation of the program, meaning that it will occur gradually over a period of time. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, proposed rule that is being coordinated by the Office of Management and Budget. Can I have the next slide, please? As I said, it represents one uniform and consistent policy applied to a defined and organized body of information. In other words, consistent guidance applied to the types, the information types that are contained in the online registry. You can break down this guidance into four basic parts. Safeguarding, dissemination, decontrol, and marking represented by those columns in this diagram that you see in front of you. The safeguarding, if you're not familiar with this terminology, uh, in its most basic understanding is how you would protect the information, for example, physically, whether you put it in one envelope or two envelopes, whether it is in a locked drawer or it is in an area that is restricted. Dissemination talks to who can have access to it and who cannot have access to it. The control uh, deals with uh, the whole issue of when the uh, measures that you're using to protect or restrict the dissemination of the information can, uh, can you basically no longer have to do or you don't want to do. And marking deals with uh, those marks that are put on documents and other types of media that will notify the user as to how to safeguard, disseminate, and decontrol the information that is being handled. All of this is applied to the registry, it is applied, or to the categories and subcategories of information in the registry, which is all based on what? Government-wide policies, regulations, and laws. In approaching, the, in approaching the development of this uniform guidance, we have attempted to take the following approach. In, in consulting with the affected agencies and the CUI Council, we asked the fundamental question, what are you doing right now to, to protect this information? What we were attempting to do in asking the, such a question was to seek a baseline. In other words, to attempt to go to uh, what, is, what is necessary or adequate to protect the information rather than living what might be unreasonable, what would be unnecessary. In other words, we wanted to do our job in yeah. seeking the, the mean by which the, the executive branch currently uses to uh, protect most of this information falling under this program. If we have done our job right, then we should have reached this baseline, and I think we have in our proposed rule, which is under comment right now, and it is uh, 
through an interagency process being managed by OMB, the Office of Management and Budget. In addition to this proposed rule, and could I have the next slide, please? In order to implement the program, we are making preparations for various job aids and handbook, cover sheets, posters, and training materials. On this slide, you see a few of the things that we are developing. They're in a very advanced form of development, based as they are on the proposed rule. As the proposed rule is changed, we will, of course, make modifications to these materials that uh, we are preparing. One thing I'd like to uh, highlight is that we have already available on our website uh, modules of training available to all. As you may sense in hearing me and uh, if you read the executive order 13556, you will see there is an emphasis on openness and transparency. The CUI registry yeah. is open to all. When we have the proposed rule finalized, and by the way, it will go through public comment, it will be posted for all. The job aids will be available to the general public, and we will also make available training. I'm sorry, I believe that we have someone um, talking on their line. If you unmuted your phone line, please hit star six. Thank you. Uh, as I was speaking about the preparation of, uh, of training aids and, and training and, 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 and job aids and handbooks, I am getting into the subject of implementation. I have talked about phased implementation. Can we have the next slide, please? This uh, is a very busy slide, and I have no intention of going into every aspect of it, but I'd like to emphasize a couple of main things. One thing uh, that you'll readily see is that we have conceived of this program being implemented in four phases. Two of, uh, uh, one of planning, one of readiness, one of initiation, and one of finality. Uh, it begins with day zero. What is day zero? Day zero for us is the finalization of the federal rule. At this point, one of the major things that will begin to take place is that agencies will develop and publish their implementing policy based on that federal rule. They will then uh, move on to conducting training of their employees based on all of the guidance of the CUI, the Controlled Unclassified Information Executive Agent, and also on their agency policy, which implements the federal rule. Um, at a certain point, by year one, we will have initial operating capability. That's what that IOC stands for. And if we have done our job correctly and we have addressed the baseline, the mean by which most of this information is already controlled within the federal government, agencies will have a soft start in asserting physical safeguarding. Because if it is already the baseline, they should be able easily to meet the federal rule which encapsulates that baseline. When we move on to initiation and final implementation, we will, at year, with initial, uh, initial operating capability and uh, with, the physical, with the assertion of physical safeguarding and the training of the workforce, the workforce at this point should be able to handle, recognize, and receive CUI gradually. Over the next three to four years, we can see that agencies will begin to uh, mark using the new CUI markings, and there will be a slow burnout of the old markings. When I say slow burnout of the old markings, I do not mean, and let me repeat this, I do not mean that agencies of the U.S. government will have to waste resources in going back to remark their legacy information. 
they will only be marking information that they will be using, using currently, either, either reusing or, or creating. But they will not have to go back and go through files and files and boxes and boxes to remark information that is either stored or is not being used. That's sort of an overview of implementation. I'd like to move on now to IT implementation. Can we have the next slide, please? One of the important points of the executive order is that the executive order called for the CUI executive agent not to prescribe a parallel system to that already existing within the government, to that already existing within the government to, to protect uh, information in data form. As it says in the executive order, and I'll read this short passage, this order shall be implemented in a manner consistent with applicable government-wide standards and guidelines issued by the National Institute of Standards and Technology and applicable policies established by the Office of Management and Budget. Where CUI guidance addresses IT's issues, these must be aligned to existing federal policies. Can I have the next slide, please? Consequently, and we're on slide 15 for those of you who are following it, uh, the Information Security Oversight Office and the National Institute of Standards and Technology have developed a strong partnership. In our uh, proposed rule, the following guidance appears, and I'll read it for everyone. In accordance with Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 199, the confidentiality impact level for controlled unclassified information shall be no lower than the moderate level. What that means is that we will we are we are or we are leveraging and working in partnership with uh, well we are leveraging already existing standards that are used to protect information in data form within the government. That information is protected according to its confidentiality, integrity, and availability according to three levels in each area, low, moderate, and high. And we are addressing, we are only addressing that aspect of confidentiality, and we are saying that it shall be protected at no lower than the moderate level. And for those that are familiar with the, uh, with the Federal Information Processing Standard publications and uh, familiar with the NIST special publications, uh, they will understand that this is part of a risk management framework according to which systems are protected. And um, these systems uh, are, uh, are exist, however, within the government, but they also exist within the contractor world. Um, within the contractor world, however, there, are, there is a different environment than the government world. Um, the government publications are a blueprint to, their, to the construction of systems. Um, you build a system according to what you find in the catalog of controls that is represented by a publication known as the NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, special publication 800-53. Within the contractor environment, systems already exist, often protecting information at levels equal or above those which are represented by moderate uh, confidentiality. We recognize this and we are taking a particular approach to applying the CUI requirement within the contractor environment. It has two basic, uh, two basic uh, parts of this approach. Uh, one part is to develop a special publication and another part is to apply it using 
the Federal Acquisition Regulation. Could I have the next slide, please? Here, I, here is captured our basic approach. Uh, we, are, we are grounded in moderate confidentiality in terms of all that that means in terms of security controls that must be used on an information system. But our approach is based on requirement descriptions with some specified controls in this way allowing for the use of equivalent or comparable, compa comparable protections that exist within the contractor world. In other words, although, they, although a contractor system may not have every single control as outlined in the NIST Special Publication 800-53, the catalog of security controls, it may reach the same level of protection as described by the publication which points to that catalog. The Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 200. I know this is very technical, but it, is, it does deal with information systems and information technology. I hope that uh, most of the audience can follow what I am saying. So, what our intention is, is to develop this special publication in partnership with the National Institutes of Standards and Technology so that the moderate level of confidentiality can be applied within the contractor world. When NIST develops such a publication, the National Institute of Standards and Technology develops such a publication, it is put online for public comment throughout the world including industry, the very people who are going to be affected by, the, uh, by, by this publication. It is, again, an emphasis on openness and transparency, two very vital parts of this CUI program. Could I have the next slide, uh, please? Another thing that those who are familiar with the risk management framework uh, uh, will be attuned to is this is the catalog of information types that NIST maintains. It is maintained in the National Institute of Standards and Technology Special Publication 800-60 where the levels of confidentiality, integrity, and availability are prescribed. NIST plans to incorporate the categories and subcategories of the CUI registry into this publication and specify that they, that, uh, that, mu that they must be protected with at the moderate, uh, moderate, uh, moderate confidentiality. Um, and uh, in terms of integrity and availability, NIST will follow its own processes in assigning uh, levels to these. Um, Anyway, I, I, I want to now talk about how this will be uh, applied to the contractor environment. If we could to, turn to slide 18, please. So I've spoken to the executive order. I've, the executive order 13556, Controlled Unclassified Information. I've spoken to the registry, which defines the scope of information that falls under this program and I've spoken to the proposed rule, which is, uh, which is, uh, is currently under OMB uh, coordination. And I've spoken to the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, standards that will, be, uh, that will be applied to protect the information in data form. But what I have not spoken to is how this will be applied to the contractor world. I've made some reference to the Federal Acquisition Regulation. Uh, could we turn to the next slide? For those of you who are not familiar with uh, the Federal Acquisition Regulation, it is uh, a very complex matter. But if I could simplify it and make a generalization, there is a regulation that governs how the federal government conducts its business, 
how contracts are established between itself and private industry, for example. And what we are attempting to do is to draft a clause that will be inserted into contracts uh, between the government and private industry when controlled unclassified information will be involved. Uh, naturally, such a, such a clause, which will be a contractual regulation, will uh, obligate a contractor to protect CUI in accordance with the executive order, with issuances, issuances by the CUI executive agent, any implementation policies, and this publication that we are developing that will apply moderate confidentiality within the contractor environment and allow for equivalencies. Um, but we will also, uh, uh, we will also uh, learn from best practices that are involved in other efforts that are similar to this that are going on in the government, including one within the Department of Defense, which has a supplement to the Federal Acquisition Regulation. And uh, in this supplement, they have uh, provisions for the safeguarding of unclassified controlled technical information. Controlled technical information is a very broad category. It will be a part of the CUI registry as a category. Uh, it will be in registered. And we are learning much by observing how this uh, clause and the requirements associated with it are being implemented with the contractor world. And one of the things that we are learning is how uh, security incidents involving compromise of, of information will be handled. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? And so uh, one of the ways in which uh, we will be, um, one, of the, one of the things that we will be doing in, in, in order to exercise oversight is making full uh, use of what already exists without having to go through additional expenditure of very scarce resources. And so there exists within the government uh, the system for award management, the SAM database. And we intend to leverage the SAM database in order, to, uh, in order for contractors to make representations and certifications relevant to their capabilities regarding CUI in order that we may use this database to exercise oversight in the future. This is still being, this is still being contemplated. We are consulting with private industry to, and the executive order requires that we consult with private industry in order to, in, in order to obtain insights and needed input. And so much of this is still under consideration. Um, but I will also add one other point here is that even after the drafting of this uh, FAR clause, this too, as in the case of the proposed rule, will undergo public comment, formal public comment, so that uh, we are, are attuned to its effects on private industry, the very people who will be implementing the program. Um, when will this all take place? If I could have the next slide, please. Um, this is slide 21. Um, as I may recall in my discussion of phased implementation, day zero is what? Day zero is when the federal rule is finalized, after it has undergone the interagency comment and public comment, when all has been settled and finalized, and it is incorporated into the Code of Federal Regulations. We are anticipating on day zero to have also by that time have finished our work with the National Institute of Standards and Technology and with the public in developing that document which applies the information technology protection standards for moderate confidentiality within the contractor environment. We are anticipating finishing that at the same time on day zero and then at that point during the planning and readiness 
phases, which will be the first year of the program's implementation. We will be working with the Federal Acquisition Regulation Council, made up of the GSA, NASA, and DOD, who share it, uh, to, to, uh, to develop the Federal Acquisition Regulation Clause that will be used to apply these, uh, these, uh, these requirements to industry, which, again, I will repeat, will also go through public comment and comment from industry, the very, group, the very stakeholder group that will be responsible for implementing the program within their environment. We hope to have all of this done by the first, end of the first year of implementation so that when initiation takes place by the executive branch, they will have, uh, the agencies will have at their, will have available to them the clause to begin inserting into the new contracts, the new contracts, and that's what we anticipate, which, they, which involve controlled unclassified information. Can I have the next slide, please? I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, it, is a, uh, it is a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, you really must uh, have a very strong interest in the subject to listen to uh, a presentation and briefing in the mid-afternoon on such a subject. But I am available uh, for your questions at this point, and uh, please feel free to ask what, uh, what you would like to ask. Thank you so much. So for those of you who have dialed in using that 1877 number, you can hit star six on your telephone. That will unmute your line, and then that way you can ask us any questions you might have. I'd like to start with two questions that were asked a little earlier. This one from Nancy Hicks. She said, where is DOD in this? Uh, DOD is sitting on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, the uh, controlled, unclassification, controlled Unclassified Information Advisory Council. Um, they provide us. Uh, they provide us input. Um, they. I would regard them as a uh, as a uh, strong advocate for the program. It has a number of uh, advantages for DoD in terms of uh, unified guidance and sharing uh, with many of their partners throughout the executive branch. Uh, we have enjoyed a very close re working relationship with DOD on this, in this area, and we regard them as a major stakeholder. Thank you. And then we had another question from Matthew Herbert. He said, are there any plans for metadata guidance for the managing of electronics DUI? Yes. And so um, uh, the basic way that, uh, the basic way that I will say this, um, we don't intend to create metadata tagging standards as part of CUI policy um, in the same way that we will not be creating government-wide IT policies independent of uh, federal standards already in use. CUI policy will leverage the existing standards for metadata tagging within the executive branch that are in use among agencies when sharing and transmitting information electronically. As in the case of our relationship to the National Institute of Standards and Technology and its setting of standards for, for FISMA implementation, the CUI executive agent is open to providing assistance and input to those parties responsible for setting executive branch-wide metadata tagging standards, but will not be devising an alternative or parallel federal government IT policy, area, policy in this area. Michael Page says, has all of this been approved by other agencies? Uh, I, when you say approved, uh, we, we can answer this in a couple different ways. Um, the president issues an executive order uh, setting the policy for the executive branch and calls for the CUI executive agent to consult with uh, agencies of the executive branch in developing the overarching policies uh, to consult not only with, the ex with other agencies in the executive branch, but to also consult with public and state and locals uh, and tribals uh, to, to, develop the, to develop policies, establish categories of, 
of information falling under the under the program. So I can answer your question in this in this fashion. While we're not seeking approval, what we are doing is consulting and addressing needs and requirements. I think that's the uh, that's the secret of a successful program. We had another question or a follow-up question from Nancy. I work with a lot of CUI in the form of technical reports. What are you talking? Uh, what you were talking about seems to be PII information. Can you talk about CUI in the context of tech, technical reports? Well, um, when you say CUI, I assume you mean at the moment uh, uh, sensitive but unclassified information, which is marked in a hundred different ways within the executive branch. Um, there are certain uh, certain information in terms of legacy markings that is marked controlled unclassified information. But in terms of markings and in terms of implementation, the program has not yet been implemented uh, because the uh, federal rule has not been finalized. So we are working towards the implementation of that. Uh, we're working towards the finalization of that rule and then the implementation of the program over a several year program, several, uh, 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 several year uh, phased implementation. Um, if you are working with information that uh, uh, is controlled on the basis of law, regulation, government policy, yes, that is CUI, but at the moment it is marked in various ways. Um, the scope of, to get to one, one point of your question, the scope of the information falling into the program encompasses more than what you're just saying, and I invite you to go on to the online registry at www.archives.gov forward slash CUI. The registry is, uh, that registry is, uh, is uh, a, uh, I wouldn't call it a final document, but it is an operational one. Um, um, the, again, I repeat, the implementation will take place once the finalization of the rule, but the scope of the information falling of the program has been defined, and you will find 22 categories and 85 subcategories of information falling of the program, which encompass a, a lot more than what you're just referring to. Looks like David Shaw has a question. At one point, there were four categories of CUI. CUI, controlled with standard dissemination, controlled with specific dissemination, and dissemination. Oh, controlled enhanced and specified dissemination. Are these categories included in the CUI program we are addressing? Um, so let's address uh, two points here. Uh, there was a um, it was a memorandum issued in 2008 by the Bush administration. This memorandum has been rescinded. It contained uh, different approaches to the safeguarding of uh, CUI. Um, the current proposed rule uh, has two basic levels of CUI in terms of uh, safeguarding. Um, one is CUI basic which speaks to that baseline that I, uh, that I referred to, the baseline uh, by which most agencies protect uh, information that will fall under this program in the future. Um, then there is what we would call CUI specified. CUI specified, what is that? Um, there are often in law just simply uh, the assertion um, protect this information. And where it says protect this information, it, there is a question of how to protect it. Well, that's what we do when we uh, come up with this, uh, with this standard and consistent guidance. And that's what will be, uh, that, will, that the guidance for how to protect that information will, will be known as CUI basic. Um, but where the law federal regulation or government-wide policy contains 
specific instructions or requirements on how to protect that information, that we will call CUI specified. It doesn't mean that it is protected more stringently, it, but just differently from the baseline. And where will you find instructions on how to protect that information? You will find it in the registry. The registry, which we are reworking, will be able to, um, you'll be able to access it in such a way in which you'll be able to uh, find which categories and subcategories of CUI are in fact specified, contain specific requirements written into the very law regulation and government-wide policy. Um, can, I, can I add one more thing? Um, so I, I, I addressed safeguarding there. One thing you might keep in mind with regard to dissemination that um, we in our proposed rule have said that um, dissemination shall be based on the following standard, lawful government purpose. Unless otherwise specified, again, in the law, regulation, and government-wide policy, that will be the standard by which CUI will be shared within the executive branch. We had another question from Josette Bailey. Will NAR have sufficient staff to review documents deemed CUI that, may receive, that they may receive as a part of the declassification process? Will the information in the guidance being developed help NAR's uh, subject matter experts recognize the information as CUI, or will they need to engage the agency that forwards the information for clarity? Yes. So. Um, Let's take this from a number of different viewpoints. Um, the, so we're not talking about classification, declassification. For those of you who are coming out of the classified world, uh, we know that after 25 years, uh, documents are declassified um, and go through classification review. None of this occurs uh, with regard to CUI. CUI is across the boards in terms of uh, length of time that something would be controlled. Um, the, it's written into law, regulation, government policy sometimes that something is only controlled for 18 months, sometimes only for 17 or for 72 years. Um, sometimes it is uh, controlled only until release to the Congress, such as, uh, in, uh, such as budgetary information. Um, so it is across the boards and often dictated by, actual, by its actual use or by the statute that is involved. Uh, it is often discretionary. Um, so it is based on what is occurring right now with the information. Um, it is not going, it, 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 is, it, is, it doesn't undergo a formal review. Um, so in terms of uh, CUI staff reviewing this information and, and making determinations, that's not the way in which the program has been set up. Are there, I see something about new markings. Yes, are there any more new markings? Are there that many new markings? Oh, I see. Are, yeah, I'd like to, yeah, let me take that question. Are there that many new markings? Um, this is, a, this is a very interesting question. Um, so I've said that there are over 100 ways in which uh, uh, unclassified information is, um, is uh, marked within the executive branch. Um, it's important to make a distinction here between markings and systems of markings. I think we can, if we can truthfully say that there are over 100 systems of marking in the information within the executive branch. What we are moving towards with CUI is one system of marking, which may have a number of markings associated with it, but it will be all part of one system, and that system will be online for all to view and understand. So it's a, it is a big difference between 100 systems reflected in over 100 different markings and 
one system of marking having a number of markings associated with it. And so I'd like to uh, address your question in that fashion. Okay. We are coming close to the end of our hour for today's briefing. If you have any questions remaining, please feel free to take this time now to ask. And if you're typing something long, just raise your hand so that we know that someone is actually typing right now. Yeah, I'd like to uh, say that, um, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the presentation can't address everybody's questions, and I, I'm sure that there is some desire to have questions answered. If you do have some questions that you'd like to ask and like to email to us, let me give you an email address that you might use. It's cui at nara, n-a-r-a dot gov. That's cui at nara dot gov. And we'll be more than happy to take your questions and, um, and uh, try to answer them as best we can. If you want to give us a call, uh, we have a phone number. It's 202-357-6870. That's 202-357-6870. And as I've said, it's been a real pleasure to uh, have had this honor of addressing a worldwide audience. Um, as you can tell, I am very proud to be associated with this program, which I feel is very worthwhile and will, uh, and will improve our government and, in fact, is an example of good government.